Evening, guys. Here we are live from the kitchen. Uh, got some memories I want to share and a little history of my family with you guys. This gentleman right here, this was my grandpa. This is Mr. Tommy Dixon. He was my mother's father. And here is a picture in about 1977 that our local newspaper come by and visited with him and uh, took this picture of him feeding the uh, stags and the pullets. That's how much times have changed uh, from then to now. As you can see, he feeding a lot of daddies. What would happen was the daddy would hatch off the stags and then they'd end up at Grandpa's house. <laughs> and Grandpa lived right next door to my father when we were growing up. And... Uh, they all the young fowl then always end up at grandpa's house uh probably because you can see that big container there on that shelf that was grandpa's feed bu uh box he kept his feed in so he uh he loved the roosters and uh i'll give you all a little bit of the history my grandfather was a the youngest son of about he was born in 1904 so let me, that's gonna carry you way back and uh he was the youngest son of a bunch of brothers, and his next to oldest brother was at a cockfight. And this is how our family first got into the rooster business. Uh, my uncle Frank, my great uncle Frank, uh, was my grandfather's next to oldest brother, and he was off at a, a, a cockfight, a, 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 a an event, and he had betted a lot of money on a bird, and. Uh, the bird won, and after the after the fight, he was telling the uh, the owner of the bird how how good he was and how how much he liked him, and uh, and uh, praising him for this about this bird. And uh, the owner of this bird told my uncle Frank uh, that if he wanted him, he could have him, but he would have to have some real tender love and care because he had had an eye knocked out. He'd had several things happen to him and he told him he would give him that bird and he could take him home but he'd have to be taken really good care of and he accepted him and he told him if you'll come to my farm I'll give you a hen. Well, my Uncle Frank being the rambler and the gambler he was, of course he did whatever older brother would do. He took him back to the house, uh, back to his family's home and gave him to my grandfather and told my grandfather, take care of this rooster, don't let him die, and I'm going to bring you a hen. This is a, these are fighting chickens. And, uh, and he did. And that's how we first got involved with them. And when I was a child, I used to sit on that porch right there, that porch, hours and hours, and talk chickens with my grandfather. It was some of the fondest memories of my life. As you can see, for the guys who know me, look, he's got his stocking hat on, or toboggan, oh, my grandfather. I guess that's where I get it from, and uh, his Adidas. But he was a cool cat, you know, cool cat. You know. They were all old swamp rat coon asses, and just wonderful people. And you see they got some... Roundhead looking stags there, and there's some of Daddy's old, old hatch chickens there, and uh, it was just a wonderful time in my life. And uh, things were a lot different then. You know, things were a lot different when the newspaper comes out and takes a picture of you on your porch feeding your game chickens, and uh, in a positive manner. But just memories. But that's how. Uh, I was first introduced, and our family was first introduced. And he was born in 1904, and that puts him, he was probably about 12 <clears throat> when Uncle Frank brought him. So you're looking at around the 1920s and around in that area there, right around the, the Dura era and uh, at the beginning of Madigan stuff and all that, and all during that, that fame. And actually, we're, I'm sitting right here at this, table tonight at my mother's home um, 
about a quarter of a mile straight through what used to be woods, but it's now a cow pasture. Uh, there was a turn of the century ultra modern cockpit, and uh, I used to play in that pit when I was a little boy. Uh, me and my grandfather would go down there. There was a pond close to it, and we'd go fishing. We always ended up at that cockpit uh, with my grandfather telling me stories, and uh, just some of the most fondest memories in my life was there. And I just it's a pleasure to share this with you guys. As you can see, the, they were classy fowl. Even then, this was probably in 78, sometime during that era. Uh, I was probably 10 or 12 years old, 2078 and, you know, 79, something like that. But uh, just uh, a little of the history of game fowl in my family. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I'll try to get a reading in for y'all soon uh we're gonna try to do some stuff on the uh, hermes b of course <laughs> my favorite but uh those are uh seem to be uh some of daddy's roundhead foul the old norman foul and uh some of that kelso foul with a some hatch foul there i only seen one rooster in the picture that's probably a brown red but uh, he was, my grandfather was very proud of those brown reds too. He loved them brown reds. And uh, uh, as a matter of fact, he would have, quite often he would have me go get daddy's brown red birdcock and bring him over there. And and uh, he loved those those brown red roosters. I always said they were the best that, that we had at that time out of all the families. But that is my grandfather, Mr. Tommy Dixon. And like I said, he was the youngest of a bunch of brothers. They were all, oh, uh, Coonasses and uh, swamp rat gamblers and all that. Uh, that's pretty much what they did. And uh, that's the way I growed up right there, guys. Y'all have a wonderful evening. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed it.